hour number two on the Friday edition of the Steve Malsberg Show, which means in uh, just a little under two hours, we are all out of here uh, for the weekend. Uh, we're going to hook up in just a few minutes with uh, Larry Sabato, director of uh, the University of Virginia Center for Politics. And he's got a new one out, a new book on the assassination of JFK. It's called The Kennedy Half Century, The Presidency, Assassination, and Lasting Legacy, legacy he said, of John F. Kennedy. And uh, he claims to have proof that, uh, that uh, Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone shooter, although he does say that, um, that the, there were the major government investigations that were launched into uh, uh, the Kennedy assassination over the years uh, were mishandled, and it does leave open the possibility um, that um, you know, there were more factors behind the president's death uh, than simply a deranged lone sniper. Um, so we'll get all that uh, settled out with uh, Larry. We'll also ask him his take on the um, the shutdown, the uh, aftermath of the shutdown, and all that uh, good kind of stuff. Uh, we're also going to speak this hour with uh, Noel Shepard, uh, Malsberg's Media Madness. That's at the bottom of the hour. And, and in the same half hour, as if that wasn't enough, we're going to couple it back to back and belly to belly as uh, John Sterling, the... Uh, New York Yankees radio broadcaster says, back to back in the belly to belly, uh, with Kendall Coffee as we go spinning the law. So we are chock full in this hour. I also want to squeeze in, hopefully, some uh, sound bites or at least one more or two more of Chris Christie, who uh, at the last debate he had with his uh, opponent, Democratic opponent in the race for governor, also weighed in. We played you yesterday, him weighing in on gay marriage, weighing in on Republicans, rejecting some of his thoughts, and also on his uh, theory that um, global warming is real and man-made. Turns out he also had something to say, apparently a change of position on offering discounted tuition to illegals. That's right. He's now on that bandwagon. And wait till you hear his logic. You're going to... It's going to drive you nuts if you want to like Christie, if you want to support Christie, if you think Christie should be the Republican nominee. It's going to drive you nuts because here's another issue where he's out of touch with conservative thought process. And and what his reasoning for supporting this now is going to really shock uh, residents in, of New Jersey, of which I am one. And I was shocked at his reasoning. So we'll get to that. Hopefully uh, we're about to hook up uh, with uh, the aforementioned. Uh, Larry Sabato, it'll be his uh, first appearance. Uh, no, I think we had him once before on this show, uh, but I've talked to him many times over the years. Director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics and author of the new one, as I said, uh, The Kennedy Half Century, The Presidency, Assassination, and Lasting Legacy of John F. Kennedy. Hey, Larry, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for giving some attention to The Kennedy Half Century. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, it only happens uh uh, once, uh, only once will it be a half century, uh, That's right. and I don't think. Uh, well, I, know, I don't think I'll be here for the century, so we might as well. I won't be. We, That's for sure. we might as well do it now. <laughs> All right. So, and and I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you at the end of the interview about the shutdown and the aftermath and all that, but I do want to concentrate on this for a second here, and, and that is you. Unlike some other books that are out now, your book claims that, and you claim as its author that um, you have proof that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone shooter. Correct. Well, I have proof that the investigation conducted by the House Select Committee on Assassinations in the 1970s that concluded that President Kennedy was probably killed by a conspiracy was simply wrong. Their evidence turns out to have been completely misconstrued, and I've proven it. This isn't a theory. Uh, we use the scientific method. We have brought together the best audio experts in the world. And we have clearly disproven it, as anyone will see that reads the book. Yeah, and, and, and the audio you're talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is the uh, in, in 79, the House Select Committee on Assassin, uh, Assassinations used uh, the audio which investigators believed included the sound of four gunshots. And with the use of your experts, as you just described, uh, you, you found that, that uh, the, there were those four sounds, not all of them were gunshots, correct? None of them were gunshots. None of them. It turns out that the policeman who had the stuck microphone on his motorcycle who was recording the sound was not in Dealey Plaza, as the House Select Committee had insisted, but rather was two and a half miles away from Kennedy at the time the shots were fired. 
There's no way the sounds could have been recorded. This thing is primitive. This, this uh, microphone on the motorcycle is equivalent to a telephone receiver. So, so you say that if anyone else uh, did participate beyond uh, the picket fence on the, on the grassy knoll, so you say that if anyone else uh, did participate beyond uh, the picket fence on the, on the grassy knoll. That's right, because there's simply no evidence of that additional shot that would have been necessary to create a, uh, a conspiracy. Uh, all we see are the results of three bullets and they're all coming from the same direction, the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. And the overwhelming evidence is Lee Harvey Oswald was there firing the gun. Now, you know, there are a thousand conspiracy books. Take your pick. You've got everything but a UFO. <laughs> well, that's an interesting one. Maybe now you just gave somebody out there an idea. But, Larry, you, you don't rule out the possibility, having notwithstanding you know, everything you just said, you don't rule out the possibility uh, that, um, that, that they're, you know, Oswald was encouraged uh, by other parties, uh, the Cuban government, um, uh, the CIA, <clears throat> the organized crime. Uh, you, you still leave the door open for why Oswald did what he did, correct? That is absolutely correct. And here's why, Steve. What, what's really important to remember is the Warren Commission also was a flawed commission. It also did a bad job. It was a rush job. It was on a political schedule set by President Johnson. Its conclusion that Oswald acted alone was preset by Oswald and, excuse me, by uh, President Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover and a whole lot of other people in senior positions. So you see, the Warren Commission failed to go down the trails while the trails were hot. And as a result, we will never be able to say with 100% certainty that Lee Harvey Oswald acted completely alone. And, and do you believe that was purposeful, that, that, that LBJ and the FBI uh, wanted it that way? And, if, and well, if so, why do you believe so? Well, I certainly believe it was true uh, for uh, Johnson and the FBI and the CIA, and here they had different motives. Despite all the books you're going to read this fall about how LBJ did it, look, LBJ was was really a very difficult, disreputable individual in lots of ways. But no, he did not kill his predecessor. All right, let me just get that on the table. But what he wanted was his own presidency. He wanted this investigation out of the way so he could come into his own in time for his election in November 1964. He barely got his wish. The Warren Commission was released, the report was released in September 1964. As far as uh, Hoover and the FBI and also the CIA, they had plenty to hide. Both the FBI and the CIA had been monitoring Lee Harvey Oswald closely, despite what they had said, and they missed entirely his potential to be an assassin. Very interesting. And I, I, the, the book, again, uh, by Larry is The Kennedy Half Century, The Presidency, Assassination, and Lasting Legacy of John F. Kennedy. And let me point out that uh, Newsmax TV will have an hour-long special uh, about the JFK assassination in November. So uh, watch uh, Newsmax TV uh, for details uh, for this important uh, retrospective. Uh, we'll keep you informed with more details as they become available when we get closer to the broadcast date of uh, that special. Uh, Larry, great luck with the book, but before I let you go, I, I, I want to just ask you, um, I, 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 boy, you know, for, for the last week I've been saying, or the last few days I've been saying this over and over, and I always preface it by my listeners must want me to shut up already, but I don't understand the Republicans, and, I don't, and I'm only talking here about the aftermath, okay? Let's not <laughs> talk about why they did it, well, should they have done it, was it smart to have done it, etc. But you got John Boehner saying, we fought the good fight. We lost. You got McConnell saying today or yesterday, um, we're never going to do this again. We learned our lesson. How about this? And, and I respect your political insight and opinion as much as anybody in the world. So, so tell me if I'm nuts or if I have a point. How about Boehner and McConnell held a press conference together instead of these state statements and said, hey, yeah, we're waving the white flag. But we're waving the white flag to save the American people and maybe the world economy. We're waving the white flag because we have a president who it's apparent to us and evident <clears throat> to us is going to let us go over this, this cliff into uncharted waters because we simply want a, a delay in a medical device tax. I mean, so yes, we're, we're, we're quote unquote surrendering, but we're doing it for the good of the American people. Would that not have been 
smarter than, oh, well, we're never going to do this again. We learned our lesson. I don't get it, Larry. Well, there's a there's an old rule in politics. When you're not on the offense, you're on the defense. You're supposed to never retreat, never apologize. Even if you're retreating and apologizing, you don't admit that. You know, I've always remembered, we, we were talking about the 60s, the best advice that President Lyndon Johnson ever got was from a Republican senator, George Aiken from Vermont, who advised Johnson before he totally blew it in Vietnam. He said, Lyndon, declare victory and get out. And, and sometimes that's your, that's your best uh, option. But look, this is just one episode in a series of episodes we're going to have about uh, the debt limit and about spending levels and the debt itself. So I was really stunned to hear Boehner say, for example, we lost. Uh, he's, I don't see where that is necessarily true, given the long-term objective. Yeah, and then McConnell saying we'll never do it again. Well, why don't you just say, uh, hey, how, how high you want us to raise the debt ceiling next time? And, and why don't you give us your budget, Mr. President, because we're not going to threaten to do this again. I mean, I just don't get it. It makes absolutely no sense. And, and, and let me ask you, as, 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 a, as a, your role as a historian who's seen so much, uh, have you ever seen a president – like this i mean basically you know he said i want to negotiate but he said i'm going to give nothing uh he said uh his his treasury secretary said when when confronted with past presidents that have negotiated over the debt ceiling increase or the budget said to chris wallace oh no you have your history wrong i mean they tell us the grass is blue and the sky is green and if you don't agree there's something wrong with you is this president different than past presidents well, remember, he had very little experience in government at the federal level before he became president. Just a few years in the Senate, most of them eaten up by campaigning. So I think that's played a role. And you pointed out one of the places where he was clearly wrong. There's been plenty of negotiation about debt limits and budgets. Certainly since I've been around, that's the way the place works. It's all about negotiation. Yeah, and, and you have to have two to tango. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Larry, great, great talking to you. Best of luck with the book, and I hope you'll come back, sir. I, I will indeed. And again, I appreciate the attention to the Kennedy Half Century. Thank you. Appreciate you Thanks. coming on. Larry Sabato, ladies and gentlemen. And the book, The Kennedy Half Century, The Presidency, Assassination, and Lasting Legacy of uh, John F. Kennedy. Uh, when we come back, I got something for you. I got something for you. No disrespect intended to President Kennedy, who I think would not recognize his party uh, anymore. But his daughter is now going to be the, um, the uh, ambassador to Japan. We're going to let you hear some of uh, her greatest hits when we come back. Caroline Kennedy on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV. And